Good afternoon, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about hyper farming. So perhaps you were told to go on YouTube and look up a video by an elder in your clan or some other act, someone else who suggested that hyper farming might be the right solution for you. As of today, you're going to get a good lesson on how to do it. We're going to cover the farming itself within your city, hero equipment, and skill sets for your hero. So to start off with, let's take a look at the farming area. You'll notice for this city, there's a large concentration of both quarries and iron mines. Now, the reason that it's set up this way is because I wanted a little bit of both resource and I have a very high level hero that allows me to have enough skill points to do that. You'll also notice down here in the corner that you see a farm and a lumber mill. You have to keep at least one of every type of resource producing location in your city Otherwise, you aren't going to be able to upgrade your entire town, move through the palace, upgrade the other buildings. And in the end, the main point of doing hyper farming is to help you with your upgrades. So, like I said, we're doing quarries and iron here. And then there's one other resource that anyone can produce, silver. Now, silver comes over here on this other side of the city. An important thing to remember when you're doing silver is that there are other essential things on this side of the town that you do want to make sure that you have. For instance, something like the hospitals, the, the uh, Shrine of Odin, Mead Hall, Heroes of Bode, and the War Hall. Those are all things that you're going to need, as well as a barracks and a forge. So you have to put those in. Now the general rule that I was told as far as hospitals are concerned is that you want to make sure that you have at least enough space in your hospitals to hold any and all T5 or troops that were gifted to you by Loki. That way if you are attacked in the city you'll be able to revive them in the hospital and anything else it's actually going to be a little bit cheaper to go on ahead and just retrain them. So going on from there You'll notice that all of my tiles are upgraded to the maximum. Now a lot of you probably did what I did when I started the game, and you had a good variety of tiles, and at first you upgraded them all quite a bit because you like getting some resources to appear just by turning on the game and seeing it. But what actually happens is, you eventually stop keeping all of your tiles upgraded. You stop upgrading every single mine. You upgrade one because you have to, but then you go and start upgrading other buildings and you forget and then all of a sudden you have four tiles that are maxed out and a ton of them that just have nothing going on that are down at level four or five. So today the first thing we're going to talk about is how to take care of that. Now as you'll notice when you do activities you get these things called torches. And if you look at the torch, if you click on demolish, the torch shows up and you can apply a torch to destroy the building instantly. Or if you don't have any torches and it's a low level building, you can dismantle it. It doesn't take too long if it's a lower level building, but once it gets pretty big, you can see it would take a week to dismantle this building because it's all the way at the max. So what you wanna do first is look at your overall palace level. At level 21, you're actually able to completely double the production of resources in each tile when you do the 21 upgrade. If that's open to you, I would suggest, once you've decided what resource to hyper farm, that you upgrade those tiles to 21 first, because all the upgrades to build a new farm will be the exact same amount of benefit as if you just upgrade one tile or one type of resource production to level 21. After you've done that, then it's time to start demolishing your other buildings that aren't the resource you're trying to produce and begin building those up. It's kind of hard to do. It really tugs on your soul that you're going to burn down those buildings that you put time and effort and resources into creating, but it's worth it in the long run. Now some of you might be wondering, what should I hyper farm? Well that's a question you want to ask your elders in your clan. Someone in the clan should have a list of who's hyper-farming what and how much is being produced, and that helps them determine what you should be hyper-farming if you're balanced. 
if you have more of one type of tile than the other, you might mention to that elder that you already have a few extra iron mines, or a few extra stone quarries, or a few extra lumber mills, and you would really like to be farming that if you could. In which case, they'll probably go on ahead and let you, since you've already done a large chunk of the work, and it's going to be easier for you to bring a hyper farm for that online than trying to start over from scratch and farm a resource that you don't have a lot of production centers for. So, moving on, if we go over and look at the forge, that's where your hero equipment is crafted. Once you've set up your farming, and you know what you're trying to produce, you want to go and look at your equipment. Now, if you go into the equipment section, you can go through each tab and find something that does what you want. For me, I typically focus on my equipment being geared at silver because it does produce the least amount in each, sil in each manor house. So something like, let's see, something like the Destroyer's Helmet, which produces an 82% boost on silver if you get legendary, that would be a good thing to do. Also, amulets are very useful. The gold embracers actually provide the largest boost for silver overall. I have one set now, and I'm waiting until I get some better equipment to craft a new pair. The gold embracers are actually available to any player over the level of 25 with their hero. And as you can see, you can get 157% silver production boost. That's huge. That's something that you want to keep in mind when you're setting up your hero equipment. Now on to the more important matter. The biggest boost is going to come from your hero's skill tree. Now, depending on what you're thinking, you probably decided that you wanted your hero's skill tree to be about battle. You wanted to make sure that you could get the most out of it. Or you started out and you were trying to build up your town, so you geared it towards learning and building and other such things. That's okay. You might not be aware of this, but you are actually able to reset your hero skill tab. What you want to do is go under items, go to my items. I like using my items tab. It's going to be under the bonuses. And the nice thing about the my items tab is that you can't accidentally purchase something. And you also have this nice wide space in the middle where you can use your finger to scroll without accidentally activating something you don't need. Now what you want to do when you get down to the item label second chance is just go on ahead and click apply. And that's going to completely reset your hero skills. It's going to ask you if you're sure you want to reset the skills. And in this case we're going to say yes. Now one trick to doing this so that you don't have to keep buying hero skill second chances is to go over to your Heroes Adobe, click on it, and go to Hero Sets. If you have multiple Hero Sets, it's a good way to do it because all that I have to do now is save the current set that I have. And you'll notice, I'm going to go on ahead and name this one blank because it has no Hero Skills assigned. Now, when you click on this and activate this set from now on, it will completely reset your hero skills without requiring you to use a second chance. So now we're going to go to the hero themselves, and we're going to look at skills. So now we have our skill tree. And if you're trying to do resource production, it's important that you go on ahead and go down to level 3 boosts. You'll see why in a second. Now on this account, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing stone, iron, and silver. So what I want to do is get down here without spending any more points than I absolutely have to to get it done. So if you click on silver production, it'll say you need to do stone production level 5. So you click go to. You'll keep clicking go to until you get to the bottom, and it says that you can actually do something. So now we're doing building level 1, I'm going to put 1 point on that, and now we're going to do learning speed level 1, got to go to that and click 1. Now what I can do is just click, keep clicking the upgrade button, and as you see it's automatically taking me through each level to do the minimum amount of points that I need to get back up to that silver tier 3 boost for the hero skill. 
It's a good way to do it because it keeps you from accidentally adding any more points than you need to something that's not as important. Now when we get to the level 3 production, you're going to notice something about this next level and the boost that it produces. So right now we're at 7%, the next level is 9. And as I keep doing this, you'll notice that you keep getting a bigger and bigger boost. This will take up 50 points to max out a silver or other level 3 production enhancement. But now that we're getting up here to 250, it tops out at 350. Now at this point, you want to go back and look at the next thing down that you want to fill in. So we are doing stone production. Do the same thing. Go on ahead and max that out as well. Now you're going to notice you're eating up your points. And this skill, this skill tree that I'm filling out right now is geared solely for resource production and farming. I'm at the point now where a lot of builds take two to three weeks, and I don't necessarily want to just have on the same set that maximizes building when I'm not going to be doing any building. So we'll go back here to iron production as well. That's another important one for this particular town. And we're going to go on and max that out. Now, because this is a hyper farming setup, the important thing is to max out the production for each item first. So we're going to skip over building level 2, and we're going to go back to silver production level 2. And we're going to max that one out. This one's only going to take up 20 points. Then we'll do the stone. And then where is the iron? The iron one's right down here. So remember, if you're doing something else, if you were doing lumber, the same principles would apply. You would go down to lumber level 3 and start out maximizing it. What I'm doing right now is a skill set for what I'm farming at a hyper capacity in my town at the moment. So now we're going to go on to silver production level 1. We're going to max that one out. Now one thing you probably noticed is that the maximized silver production is only 40% for level 1 and 65% for level 2. That's okay, that's why we're doing this. We want to get the most out of our farm and every little bit does help. Okay, so now we still have some points left. So what I want to do is go back down to resource yielding number 2. This is going to let me get the most speed when I'm yielding resources at tiles on the map. So now we're at level 100% increase for resource yield speed. It's going to be really nice and you're going to notice that when you're farming on the map. I'm not going to set up the invaders right now because each person has their own invader preferences for setting it up. And that's something I'll do on my own time later. So now that we've set up our farming capacity, let's take a look at what we're doing. If you click on Influence, it'll take you to this tab with your profile, and you'll want to go on ahead and go to Statistics page. This is where you're going to find out how much you're producing of everything. As you can see, with my current setup right now, we're producing 916,000 silvers per hour, 1.35 or 36 million stone, and 1.34 million iron per hour. This is a lot of production, and it's really going to help out the clan, and it's going to help you out as well. So if we look at this, and we click on the tab, we get a detailed view of what's going on here. You'll notice at the top you have what your production per hour is, then what you have, and then what your capacity is. Now capacity is an important factor in this, because as your farm approaches capacity, once it reaches that, it stops producing. I mean, it will still produce a tiny little bit extra, but nowhere near your maximum production output. So an important thing to do is calculate how what your turnaround time is on the resource. So since I produce 1,342,808 per hour, I 
and I can hold 7 million I need to figure out how long I can go without emptying my resources. So in this case, what you do is divide the capacity of the mine by the production per hour. So for iron, every five hours, I'm going to have to come into the game to empty it out. Otherwise, I'm going to stop producing at maximum output. Now, I know what you're thinking. I sleep more than five hours at a time. That's fine. All you want to do is make sure that at the end of the night before you go to bed, send all your resources out, and in the morning when you wake up, send them out as well. Another thing you could do is consider doing your upgrades first thing in the morning. That way you already have a lot of the resources here, and it's going to save you the tax rate on the bank. Now, one part of what was generating so much of my production is some of these boosts that are available. And every one that I have on this account is actually available through the clan store. So if you look at this, you'll see we have iron production, a 50% boost. Silver, a 50% boost as well, and the same on stone. And then most importantly, there's the resource production, which increases the production of all resources. Using these things that are obtainable in the clan store for no money or gold being spent by you, you're able to get 100% boost on all of your production. And these boosts really do help out. And then if you go on ahead and look at my hero skin, armor and what the equipment is that I'm wearing, you'll see that we have the Koenig's back sword, and that one is geared specifically for producing silver. You'll also notice that we have a falcon figurine, and every piece of equipment my hero is wearing right now is geared towards me producing as much silver as possible. So I hope that that's a good introduction to people and tells them a little bit about how to set up the hyper farming. Remember, it only works if you send your resources out when your capacity fills up. Otherwise, it doesn't do any good. You just fill up with resources and you stop producing them. That's where the marketplace comes in. Now with the marketplace, the lowest tax rate you can achieve is 8%. And that happens at level 21. Most of the good upgrades that you do for things in your city come at level 21. And that's just... A little thing that you need to consider as you're upgrading your town that the marketplace is important for the hyper farming. Now if someone in your clan referred you to do this so you could set up your own hyper farming this is probably the point where you don't need to keep listening because right now we're going to talk about for members of different clans who are elders and trying to set up a hyper farming program. And in that case the important thing the biggest thing is having a bank. Your bank should always be shielded. Your bank needs to be also upgraded to preferably level 21 so that you get that minimum tax break. And you also want to make sure that in your bank you upgrade the Shrine of Odin. Even though you aren't really going to be doing any fighting or anything with the bank, the thing about that is, is that it allows you to send out more marches at a time. A level 21 Shrine of Odin lets you send out five marches. That means that you can send out five trade convoys at once which helps you do large bills more quickly and efficiently. Another important thing about setting up a bank is that your food should always should never be in the red with the bank. That means that you can't have a large army in the bank, and also that you don't really want a large army in the bank because the goal is to always be shielded and never need to be in a situation where someone can attack you and take all your stuff. Now a quick word of advice for setting up the bank Select one person in your clan, preferably someone who's on quite often, that's going to be able to, re to fulfill requests made by members of your clan, and go on ahead and have them set up on a second device that they have, a new account for the game. The quickest and easiest way to set this up is going to be to spend roughly $40 on it. Now, it seems like a, not a lot, and if you've ever bought packs on separate days, it really isn't. But if you buy all your resource packs on the first day before the tab on the bank offers resets itself, you'll be able to get them all at the $4.99 introductory rate US dollars. I'm not sure what it is in euros or other currencies. I just know what the starting rate is for US dollars. And you want to buy everything that's in that tab. Two of the more important things to buy would be to make sure that you get one that has a dual profit and a dual 
uh, and a second craftsman as well. And really what you're going to do is very quickly build up the core essentials of your town. You want to upgrade your palace. And basically what you want to do is go back to the palace upgrading tab. Click on your palace. And then go to use the go to feature to find out what you need to do to get your palace upgraded as quick as possible. As you can see, you'll have to upgrade the market and other essential pieces as well as resource production centers in the town. You only need to do one of each thing. That's all you have to do. The goal though is to get your banks, town, and level up to 21 so that you can have the level 21 marketplace with the lower tax bracket. And again, you want your Shrine of Odin to be at level 21 so that you can get the maximum shipment or the maximum number of marches out at a time. Now a couple of words on administering a bank. It's going to take some time for everybody in your clan to adjust to the idea that they go out, they farm, they gather these resources, and then ship them somewhere else. But it is very valuable. It allows them to not necessarily have to worry about having everything they've worked so hard to gather be stolen by a shield. Be stolen if their shield drops. It provides them a safe refuge where they can get their materials stored. It also provides a way for people that are hyper-farming to get resources that they don't hyper-farm themselves. A biggest problem that we've encountered in the clan that I'm in is actually with people who don't hyper-farm and don't contribute trying to request resources. It's important that you establish very early on that the bank is a system that you have to pay into to reap the benefits of. If you have a bunch of players that you just give resources to without actually contributing anything back into the bank, then the people who hyperfarm are going to feel gypped when there's not enough stuff to fulfill their requests. So a very easy way to do this is to go into your mail and always just have the banker keep track of names that pop up as, as resources that are being sent to them. This way you can go on ahead and avoid the headaches of people not being able to upgrade that are sending tons of resources and people that don't contribute always asking for tons of resources because they just seem to get them. And as far as why you want to hyper farm, I'll tell you. KVK. The Kingdom vs. Kingdom competitions have been up to once a week now. During Kingdom vs. Kingdom competitions, it's very dangerous to farm and gather resources. A bank and a hyper farm allow you to constantly be training and healing troops so you can get back into the fight, as well as keeping you from having idle time where you aren't able, where you just have to sit around and do nothing and your craftsmen or your prophet aren't able to do anything because you can't gather the resources you need for your next upgrades. Along with that, there is the possibility of tile wars. It does happen from time to time, and they're quite vicious, especially because they prevent people from being able to get resources from tiles on the map unless they can sit there and babysit the tile. While you can do that and gather some resources, it's really not a very effective way to do it, and you're never going to get the same level of production as when there's not a tile war or a KBK event going on. That's part of the reason that hyper farming is so good is that it allows you to not need the tiles on there. If you don't want to farm, if you can't farm, it's not a big deal. You can still produce the resources that you need to build up stores and be able to make your upgrades as you want to do them. So, like I said, the bank does need to be shielded, and so let's talk about how to acquire shields quickly and efficiently. If you go under the Items tab, and you scroll down, you'll notice that there's the Retreat Coffers. Now the Retreat Huge Coffer includes a 3-day peace treaty, which costs $5,000 if you buy it on it, or 5,000 gold if you buy it on your own. But it also comes with the relocation, name change, and a renamed town. Relocations are handy because if your clan ever has to relocate the hive, or if a player wants a ton of resources and you want to move closer to them in order to send the resources quickly, it is very convenient. That being said, your bank also is able to have a hero that can go out and attack invaders in order to get points for your kingdom during KVK. That's another good use of those relocations. And since they come as part of a package that costs less than getting the three-day peace treaty on its own, it's probably the best value if you want long-term shielding. 
on my bank right now, there's about five weeks of shield, and I'll keep adding more as that goes. The goal with this bank is that you don't want to accidentally wake up in the middle of the night, look at your phone, and realize all of a sudden that all of the clan's resources have been stolen because your shield dropped. That's a big problem, and your clan's not going to be very happy with you if that's how it goes. So when you're explaining to people the importance of the hyperfarming, you want to tell them that in order to access the bank, they need to contribute, and that it's going to help them ensure that they can continue to upgrade during KBKs and tile warfare, if that ever breaks out in your kingdom. That's about it for today, so I will talk to you all later. I might post another video about how to upgrade your hero skill set for invader fighting, as well as some other useful information in the future.